Saints of the Most High God, it is me, Maurice Brown, Elder Maurice Brown, once again here before you. And I'm going to say something that many times is minimized. We don't give enough credit or we don't put enough stress on what I'm getting ready to say. I'm coming to you in spirit and in truth. I'm coming to you in spirit and in truth. I'm getting ready to give you a quick, super short sermon. And the name of this sermon is The Deception of Our Senses. The Deception of Our Senses. Father God, we thank you for today, for truly this is the day that you have made and we do rejoice and we are glad in it. We ask that you touch us right now and visit us. Visit us in the spirit of truth. Visit us in our hearts. We ask that you bypass our senses. We ask that you bypass entertainment and just touch us right now where we need a touch. And we will be so careful to give you name, the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I come to you in the spirit of truth and this message here is the deceit of our senses because we look at beautiful, wonderful people on TV and we see something and we think that we know the truth because of what we see. I'm going to give you an example and I'm not using her as an example. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to isolate or throw shade on anybody, but I'm talking about the struggle that we all have with discerning truth with a lie. I'm from, I'm a 1960s baby. So I grew up in the eighties, the early eighties. And when Whitney Houston came out with her song, you give good love, you thought you saw an angel. You saw an angel on the screen. You saw someone who was beautiful. You saw someone who was pure. You saw someone who could touch the very heart of your soul with her voice. You saw someone who came down from heaven and visited you. And whether you were a man or a woman or a boy or a girl, you knew that her life was golden. She was angelic. She was an, an almost an angelic being. And there was no pain or there was no, there were no issues in her life because she was so, so pure to the eyes. But the eyes don't show the pain in life that is really there. Now, you can look through your eyes and see and be deceived. You can look through your eyes, perceiving the things that are outside of you and be, con and be deceived. But when you look in someone's eyes, their eyes never deceive you. Their eyes tell the truth that their body, their face, their car, their big house, their bank account will never tell you. We are deceived by not only what we see, we are deceived by all of our senses. We are deceived by our eyes. We're deceived by our ears. We're deceived by our mouths, our own mouths. We're deceived by our, our smell and we're deceived by our touch. We're deceived by all of our, our senses. Our heart is our true knower. You know, the willpower, emotions, and intellect uh, are the compartments of our soul. And our intellect is our knower. But our soul will deceive us. Because our soul is controlled 
by what we see and by what we hear. A child deals in total truth. <laughs> a child and a drunk, they deal with the truth. Because a child hasn't been taught the consequences of the truth. A child is too pure to know that the truth comes with a consequences or a price. So a child is going to tell you the truth. It is later on in life that we learn to lie. It's later on in life that when we begin to get spankings or, or get disciplined because we told an uh, uncomfortable truth. Or we got smacked in the mouth because we told an uncomfortable truth. That is when we begin to learn. To hold back the truth. That's when we begin to learn to manipulate what's really real. That's when we learn not to tell the truth. That the truth isn't always good or the truth may not always be comfortable. That's when the deceit starts. <laughs> so I don't want to. The reason that I'm not yelling, the reason that I am speaking to you from my heart, because I'm speaking to your heart, I want to bypass. And the reason I'm sitting here in pajamas, I just woke up and made a delivery and I haven't even gotten in the shower yet. But the reason that I come to you with no sh form or fashion I don't come to you in a suit or in a robe or from a pulpit or in a conventional church because I'm not asking you for nothing. I'm not asking anybody to send me any money. I'm not trying to use my ministry as a product or as a business to sell you something. I don't have anything to gain from what I'm telling you. I'm not putting on form or fashion. I'm trying to touch your heart so that treasure can be laid up for me in heaven and laid up for you in heaven. And I'm going to tell you this. What good is it for me to have money? What good would it mean for me to be successful? What good would it mean for me to have my needs met? And I can't help meet your needs. I can't help somebody meet their needs. I can't touch somebody and deliver somebody else and get the gratification that comes with touching somebody's heart and delivering somebody's life. God said to Samuel, man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. The heart. Learn to bypass what you see. Learn to go around what you hear. Learn to see pretenses. Close your eyes and listen to my heart. And you'll know I'm speaking to you from a place of love. Not from a place of need. Not from a place of manipulation. Not from a place of Wanting to take something from you. I come from a place to where I want to touch you and bless you. So we can all be blessed together. Amen. The deceit of our senses. And if you can understand how not to be manipulated by your senses. Then you can overcome the power of some of the seducing spirits that many of these so-called ministers or ministers have out here. And if they can't seduce you with their appearance, what they have on, or with the amount of money they have, or with their success, if they can't seduce you with those things to make you want to lay down your whole wallet for them, they'll seduce you with their, with their words, with their enticing words. Be careful. 
Finally, my brethren, I'm going to say this and I'll be gone. The word of God says in the book of Proverbs, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. Know the reason for a thing. Know the motive of a thing before you entertain it and try to take it into your soulless realm. Don't be deceived. I love you. Have a good day.